Hey everybody, good afternoon, it's Chris here. I hope you can hear me. I'm uh, in a little kind of a different spot today only because I have company right now and uh, and I wanted to um, still make this video tonight um, as my commitment to, to the YouTube channel that, I, that I've, that, that's come about right from uh, just, um, just wanted to kind of always do this. So the purpose of this video is to read out of the uh, Data Reflections. Uh, it is a recovery-based YouTube channel. So uh, I'm going to read out of the Data Reflections and share with you a little bit about it. Um, I know my hair is, looks crazy and um, it's late because I went to a, a group anniversary and we had speakers and food and mariachis and, um, and we danced and we ate cake and it was awesome. So um, anyway, let's get started, right? So Data Reflections, today is June 12th, and the title of this entry is called Forming True Partnerships. But it is from our twisted relations with family, friends, and society at large that many of us have suffered the most. We have been especially stupid and stubborn about them. The primary fact that we fail to receive The primary fact that we fail to recognize is our total inability to form a true partnership with another human being. And that's out of uh, the 12 and 12, page 53. Can these words apply to me? Am I still unable to form a true partnership with another human being? What a terrible handicap that would be for me to carry into my sober life. In my sobriety, I will meditate and pray to discover how I may be a trusted friend and companion. Wow. So, I want to read that one more time. It says, but it is from our twisted relations with family, friends, and society at large that many of us have suffered the most. We have been especially stupid and stubborn about them. The primary fact that we fail to recognize is our total inability to form a true partnership with another human being. So, I've always felt like I'm a pretty good catch, right? I've always felt that way. And I've always felt like um, I was a good person even when I wasn't. I felt that I was a good son even when I wasn't. I felt that I was a great member of society even when I wasn't. I've always kind of just felt that about myself. Like, who wouldn't want to be with me, right? Or who wouldn't want to hang out with me? Um, because I felt to recognize, you know, before I came into and to recovery, I felt to recognize that I couldn't really form a true partnership because of people that were around me perhaps before, right? It's a lot of this has changed, but just a little history. Before, if uh, I couldn't get something from you, then uh, then what are we doing here, right? Like you, you, I would um, discard a lot of people, disregard them. I know there was. There was people who like truly loved me and wanted to form true relationships with me, like long-term relationships. Um, there's two or three that come into my mind right now, and I just not four, and I could just not love them correctly. I just could not form a true partnership. I was really shut down. I would say crazy things, and and they they I would you know they would eventually put up with a lot of my stuff to save the relationship and then finally just say, you know what, I'm out of here because you ain't never going to be different. Things are never going to be different. You ain't never going to change. Now there's five people that came to my head. You know, there's, I could sit here and probably throughout this video, there'll be more people that I could think of about that I have really just, um, just hurt with my way of being um, before I came into recovery. So then I came into recovery and then I was still having problems, right? I was still couldn't, I wasn't doing all the same things that I was doing before, but a lot of the, the deeper the deeper wounds, the deeper issues, the stuff that was really, really, really ingrained in me, those that was the stuff that 
um, that was getting in the way of me of forming two partnerships. And one of them was like my people pleasing. I mean, like I would try to fight, I would try to fit in every single mold that every single person has ever made for me. I would try to fit it. And just when I thought that I was, oh my, I was like, man, I was close. They would change the mold. And then I would have to start over or do something and, and stuff like that. It just really kept me, um, it really just hurt me mentally and physically and spiritually because I could never be that, that person that that other person wanted me to be that I loved so bad. So I really wanted to just do whatever to keep them. That was not a true partnership. That was me doing all the work or that was, and vice versa, right? Sometimes it was them doing all the work and me, me making it absolutely impossible for them for them to be the person of my the of the person that that I wanted to be with I would always come up with excuses and all these I would make up red flags and you know I just could never really do it and um and that and while it was very very obvious while I was still using once I came into recovery it was still there like there was the healing had not fully taken place. So as I started to work the steps, and I've worked the steps more than once, right? Because the first one just kind of went over those those uh, those top surface surface level issues that was going on, surface level character defects, surface level pain that I still had. That that the first um, that the first steps it really really. Um, help me with that but the second the second time I did them I mean it was it was like I went deep I was able to go just a little bit deeper to really see like what I was still doing to pretty much sabotage relationships um, so just because I came into recovery and I and um, stayed here a while that didn't quite mean that that all my problems have solved and that I was even able to still form a true partnership, right? So failing to recognize that just it's failing to recognize was pretty much me thinking or um, how can I say this? So f the failure to recognize was kind of get me stuck right because I couldn't recognize what was really going on there right I had to I had to do just a little bit more work and just get a little bit deeper and um, the big book does talk about the medical the emotional and the physical and and the spiritual right so I did have to go to therapy for a little while and get to these childhood issues that I was still holding on to um, that I like I felt there was something there, but I couldn't get to the bottom. And like I just didn't know what was really happening. And then when I went to therapy, then I was able to see some things in its true form and in its true light. And it was relationships, right? Um, I had I had some like a really big heartbreak when I was young, so. I didn't realize how that heartbreak was still kind of carrying over to every single relationship that I ever was in. And it wasn't until I went to therapy that I was able to work through that, that I was able to even get clear about it because I knew something was going on, but I didn't know what it was. I couldn't quite grasp it. So um, when I went to therapy and um, we got to look at it and work on it, I got to look at it and work on it. then. Now I'm able to to form two partnerships with people. You know, I can uh, be friend to a friend and be a lover to a lover, uh, be a family member to a family member, and um, be a um, sponsee, be a sponsor, be a worker amongst workers. Be, you know, I, I could be a part of the the co-creative world with without too many hiccups or without too many problems or without too many um too many clashes do do things still happen yeah they do but now my understanding of, of partnerships is, is it's so different than what it was like when it when i got here so 
I had, I could relate to the bottom part where it says, I had been handicapped um, in my sober life because I couldn't quite grasp to whatever it was that I needed to form a true partnership. So the work this time, it really, really did help me to get a little bit more clear and to be able to love people in a whole different way. Like I can um, hang out with people and have ice cream and and that's it. And then we have a good time. And um, I don't have to be fake. I don't have to try to mold myself into some into a into a hole I don't fit. I don't have to surround myself with people who just tolerate me. I can really I feel more confident in myself. I feel liberated from having done the work about my childhood stuff that that I don't feel like this idea of not being good enough or if you really knew what 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 I'd been through that you would not want to hang out with me. So I had all these insecurities and low self esteem things even in recovery and, and I've had them for I had them for a long, long time and and man it just I'm sitting here sharing with you and just thinking how I don't I don't have a lot of those issues anymore. Can I go there do once in a while? I think like everybody's out to get me. Um, yeah, because it, it had been such a part of my life for so long that it still comes up once in a while. But now when it comes up, I can say, "Whoa, Chris, nobody's out to get you." Um, and let's let's think about it. Let's look at it. Is this an old thought just creeping up in your head? Whatever it is, let's smash it. Let's get to the bottom of it right now. Let's take care of this right now. So you don't go two or three days and you with this thought that somebody's out to get you. And today I had a I had this old, 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 old I mean from years ago this thought came into my mind and within five minutes I had a resentment and I was like, Whoa, how did that old thought from years ago that doesn't even really matter anymore just creep into my head and totally just try to get me off balance right i had a memory that cropped up and i was like started getting upset about it i felt myself getting upset about it and then i just thought like okay chris that is an old thought it's not true but even if it was it doesn't matter you're not that person you're not living that life anymore. Um, it happened, but it's over now. Now you know different. Now you're learning new things. You can do this over. You're getting a do over. And uh, before you know it, I was feeling better. And I can't even tell you what that thought was anymore. But it did. It did uh, come into my into my head, and and it almost took me there. And back in the days, a thought like that would keep me so jaded so isolated from the world isolated from two partnerships i had all these walls built up because of all these old thoughts of how people had hurt me in the past they would just crop up and make me so mad make me so cold make me so um not available right maybe so unavailable emotionally unavailable to other people and I you can't I couldn't I don't know about you but I couldn't have a true partnership with anybody so long as I was emotionally unavailable. So now that I've done some work and I and I am available, I I can see how my relationships with others are are really changing. They're into the positive direction. I mean, I can really say that um that I have really, really good relationships with other people. Platonic friendships. I mean, it's all good. Um, and I don't make stuff up about what I think it is or isn't. I just let it be and I let it t t take its run its course, get to know people, um, give myself an opportunity to to get to know myself too in the meantime. So I'm really grateful that this was a topic today. I really needed to hear this because I had a really good time with people that were friends and people who felt safe enough to go out with me tonight and hang out tonight, hang out with me and 
and dance with me and share stuff with me. And that's not who I used to be. I love who I am today. I love that I have the opportunity to form true partnerships with other people, that I'm growing still, that I'm learning still, and that and this, this process is never over. And so long as I stay close to my higher power, who I choose to call God, and I meditate and I pray, and I try to look at things a little bit different, and I don't react so crazy all the time, I give myself some space if something if i feel something that's going to trigger me i give myself some space they call it um restraint of pain and tongue right i give myself some space i can journal i can call people i can pray i can meditate i can um you know get focused on something else and i have a ton of tools that i could use today that i didn't have before um, to help me get through this a lot of the relationships that i was in some time ago, I could look back and be like, wow, I get it now. I get why they left. I get why they ran away. I get why they broke up with me. I get it. It's not because uh, I was a bad person per se, because I'm a great person, but it was because there was a time when there was some stuff I just could not, I was just not capable of doing. Um, so now that I that I know better, I can do better. So now that I, you know, have been really paying attention to my life and my emotions and my past partnerships and the sense to learn from them and to grow from them, I feel confident that I can I can build true relationships today. And um, that's just that's just another result from working the steps. You know, it's just another promise coming true. It's just an, another opportunity opportunity to not just see my growth but to work on my growth right because i'm not going to know how to solve every single situation that comes into my life i'm not going to i'm not going to not going to know how to solve every single problem or how to answer every single text or conversation or how to be in every single situation but i can ask for help today to help me to guide me to teach me and even that is different about me my god I don't even know if I if I knew that who that person really was, the person that came into recovery in 2002. It's a whole different person, and um, and I'm grateful. I'm just I feel a lot of gratitude right now. I had a really awesome day. Um, yeah, just a lot of good things happening in my life. So thank you all for taking your time to st to hang out with me tonight or today or whenever you're hearing this. If you're hearing this later on and you're just not sure how you, why you stay to the end or if you're feeling like, who is this person like? Are you serious? Just know that um, I feel that so, sometimes about myself too, but it's just what I do and, and thank you. It's, it's, thank you for watching my YouTube channel, my YouTube video. And I wish you all a beautiful, wonderful rest of your night. I'm going to get off of here and go to bed. But I do love you all. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.